Hi, um, my name is Dancy Pinkston. If I didn't say that before in the first video, um, yeah, let's continue. And this is my simple birth formula. Four keys to unlock a fearless mama birth. And I love visuals and symbols. And so each key has a special symbol um, with what its main purpose is. So number one, the very first key is pelvic prep. Your pelvis more than likely needs balance during pregnancy to reverse poor posture habits. We are generally sitting, you know, slouched in the chair or riding on long car rides, um, crossing our legs, etc., um, which can cause tight and torqued pelvic ligaments. Um, when ligaments are not balanced, it can cause a stall in labor. Um, because of the malpositioned baby that can easily get engaged, um, that can't get engaged in the pelvis. So, um, yeah, so it can stall labor if your pelvis is not in alignment. Um, pregnancy stretches and exer or exercises um, and a Webster certified chiropractor is a great way to prevent breach or transverse babies for an easier labor and birth. So my number one pelvic prep tip, be doing those things. And I have a pregnancy stretching exercise that I love for mamas to do. Okay, so your pelvis is made to expand. Your baby's head is made to mold. Um, have you ever seen those cone head babies? Yes, that's that is natural, that's normal, and exactly what that baby needed. Um, anyway, so when a birthing woman comes off her back and either turns to the side, such as laying on your side, um, she could either stand or f like just somehow forward lean, like this mama right here, onto something. Um, it allows a combination of bones in the lower back and sacrum the freedom to move and create more, and it creates more room in the pelvis with less pressure on the tailbone. So this is that little bump on that mama's um, lower back is called the rumbus of Michaelis. And essentially the sacrum just kind of expands and, you know, creates more room. So um, yeah, the best positions to allow your pelvis to expand, definitely that upright or just off off your tailbone off your back okay so this is where you prepare your body and learn how to support labor progress your pelvic floor supports a birth mechanism called the seven cardinal movements which is the internal fetal rotation that happens during birth to accommodate the changes in diameter of the pelvis this is so interesting you guys so there are three layers of the pelvis at the pelvic inlet, the top. Um, the diameter of the pelvis is widest from right to left. Um, so making an LOA position most optimal for baby to be in pre-labor. So you could see the little baby, her head or his head is turned sideways. Um, so at the pelvic outlet, the diameter is widest from front to back. So making OA most optimal for crowning. So you can see the baby is facing um, towards the mama's spine. So different labor positions can open parts of the pelvis um, inlet, mid and outlet um, to its widest diameter, such as internal thigh rotations knees together, yes, knees together, <laughs> ankles out, opens the pelvic outlet, so it's best for pushing, um, for a smoother pushing stage. And we go over tons of different positions that are epidural and um, non-epidural friendly in my program. So pelvic prep, okay, I just wanted to go over kind of my two stories here. With my first birth, because it impacted me so, so much, this pelvic prep key, 
But I, okay, so I exercise daily and I had some minor ligament pains and achy hips towards, you know, the end of my pregnancies, you know, regular stuff. The last week of my pregnancy, I discovered that my baby was sunny side up which is not an optimal birth position. It's actually connected to lots more back labor and stalled early labor. Um, so I really, really felt like this was causing me to be stuck in padroma labor. I was you know, contracting for about five days, it seemed like. Um, so um, I frantically was researching stretches to relieve the pain and just kind of the contractions and also did a set of exercises to get baby turned around yeah so she was facing my belly and I needed her to face my spine or to face sideways to um, yeah get in a good birthing position <laughs> so labor could pick up and start um, I did these exercises three times in one day, morning, noon, and night, I felt my baby spin sideways um, on my way to bed, like was not thinking I was going into labor or anything. I was just going to go to bed. <laughs> and then before I knew it, um, my water broke and I went into active labor um, that same night and had my baby in my arms three hours later. So just three hours of active labor. It was the best. I thought it was 30 minutes. <laughs> um, so with my second pregnancy, I decided um, to do a weekly Webster certified chiropractic uh, care as a form of maintenance for pelvic balance and pregnancy comfort. And I paired it with those daily prenatal stretches um, that release and balance inner pelvic ligaments. Um, throughout pregnancy. So setting myself up for success <laughs> in pregnancy was really important to me. So my pregnancy actually felt amazing compared to my first. My hips, I had no aches and no pains. And you know, when you sneeze and you get that like sharp pain, I had none of that. Um, and I think it was due to the chiropractic care. Um, so anyways, I ended up having a great, um, the baby was always in a great birthing position, always head down, always um, turned sideways, um, I mean facing sideways to enter the pelvic inlet. Um, and anyways, my labor and birth ended up being just a half, an or an hour and a half. So cut, cut my time in half, my labor time. Okay, so... Um, Here's some pelvic balance testimonies. Hey, fearless mama, thank you again for your video on uh, YouTube on how to spin a baby that is in the wrong position and how that can affect labor. A little girl is born safely thanks to you. This is one of the positions she did um, pre-labor. So, hey, Dancy, we delivered our little boy. As you saw, I have done your pelvic your videos every day leading up to his birth and for the whole night I was laboring. When we got to the hospital, uh, we barely made it to our room and we were able to have such an easy, quick and natural birth. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I don't think I would have known about all the pelvic stretches and exercises that it, um, and that it would have been so quick and seamless. Okay. Hey, fearless mom and birth. Hi. So we had our baby girl and she stayed head down after she ended up having a hospital version where they tried to, you know, get a breech baby to flip and all your videos helped me. I'm sure of it. Not to mention the peanut ball, the flying cowgirl. Um, once we were in the hospital for labor, really got things going. I went from four centimeters, bulging bag of water and non-painful contractions to water broke and then baby born two hours later after doing that exercise. And I kind of, I have it pictured right here. Okay. Key number two. This is so important. <laughs> um, the hormone oxytocin is the hormone of love. It is responsible for stimulating uterine contractions that help thin or efface and open or 
dilate the cervix, which simultaneously builds the top of the uterus, the fundus, that eventually triggers the fetal ejection reflex that pushes the baby out of the birth canal. So, um, and the, I love this picture. Um, and you can see the cervix. Uh, I don't know if you can see my thing, my key, my mouse, but the cervix essentially is gone uh, from the left to the right. But I, I'll tell you, it's not just disappearing into thin air. <laughs> it is building the top of the uterus. And so you can see how this, the right um, image, the top of the uterus is thicker. And that's what we want. We want it to build a thick um, and get stronger at the top of the uterus to eject the baby out. Because you're, like I said, you don't need to be pushing. Your uterus knows exactly what to do. Okay, so your labor hormones need guarded and protected from things that are a threat, which releases stress hormones. And unfortunately, that blocks or inhibits your body's natural pain-killing endorphins. Um, so you're going to feel more pain if you're feeling threatened or if these hormones are not working properly. And in, it actually inhibits oxytocin. So, um, yeah, maybe stalled labor is happening. So let me go over some, let me go over this chart. It's so a threat is a signal um, that signals to the brain, releases all these stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, and um, some physical effects. Like I said, um, it inhibits endorphins, it inhibits um, your painkilling, your painkillers, natural painkillers, and it inhibits your you know pro productive contractions. So. What this would look like, not really a tiger, <laughs> would be, and what this um, trigger is, it's sending you into fight or flight mode, um, your body's natural response to protect you. Um, it's not helpful in birth, not helpful at all. <laughs> um, so there, there may be some specific triggers to you, but some could be the following, white coat syndrome. I... I personally have white coat syndrome. Like if I'm at a hospital or at the doctor, I just get freaked out and my heart starts racing. And I don't know what that is, but it's it's me, <laughs> and that's what happens. So, <clears throat> um, anyways, fear. Uh, thankfully, with my hospital birth, it was just me and Josh in the room. I don't think they realized like how far along I was. So. It was just me and him, and I didn't really feel panicky or anything like that. But, okay, fear of the unknown, um, just not knowing what's going on or what's going to happen next, um, not knowing if this is normal, if this is not normal. Um, bright artificial lights can um, trigger this fight-or-flight response, raise stress hormones. Um, feeling cold, uncomfortable procedures interruptions, disturbances, <laughs> so um, unwelcome people, noise, um, you know, family members that are barging in and disturbing your rhythm, <laughs> feeling observed, maybe there are some, you know, students in your room that are kind of making you uncomfortable, um, or that grandma that's like, when is this going to happen? <laughs> okay, so Hormone prep, your thoughts, birth team, birth environment, interventions, etc. can trigger adrenaline. And it's important to discover that we can, or what we can avoid, or due to boost labor hormones that is specific to you. Um, it is also important to discover what brings us peace and relaxation. Again, totally your preference. Um what that is, you, what promotes oxytocin, and the other synergistic, synergistically important hormones, and what inhibits it. So very um, personalized um, care right here, where you may need guidance on trying to figure out those things. So I just want to add Pitocin, because I don't think we can overlook this. This is such a huge reason why I personally went um, non-epidural. But uh, I, I just, you know, weigh the risks and benefits and I, like, shoot for, you know, a certain thing that makes the most sense to me. But 
like I said, may not be your thing and that's totally fine. But I will add that um, epidurals block and opioids, which are like painkillers, um, um, pills or something like that, um, or in your IV, they block your natural painkilling endorphins. Like, so you're just depending on that to help you. You're no longer, you know, your body's no longer going to be producing those naturally. Um, so it also blocks endorphins and inhibits oxytocin. So kind of from there, you're, um, you're going artificial with trusting in those, um, synthetic hormones. So it's, um, Pitocin is synthetic version of oxytocin. So man-made, um, it's not you made like oxytocin is. So, which is responsible for the natural productive contractions. So we really need those. And, um, so it should be considered that uh, the chance of the drugs not working properly or effectively, which is one out of 10, by the way, potentially slowing down your labor and possibly leading to other interven interventions, which it was exactly what happened to my sister um, and kind of how her birth went from, you know, going well to being traumatizing. <laughs> the epidural did not work. The Pitocin was just too strong. Everything was too powerful. And, um, yeah, it, so she had nothing. She had no natural pain killing endorphins going for her and the epidural didn't work. Um, so you can pause this and look at kind of the labor hormones, but we kind of spoke over one. I could go over, um, Oh, well, we'll go over them in the next slides, I believe, but these are labor hor hormones and I go into like kind of what releases melatonin, prolactin, endorphins, and oxytocin with special unique ways. And then uh, if adrenaline is produced, what is stimulating that? Um, and also um, what is inhibiting each of those hormones commonly. So. The pain cycle can be entered through fear or through tension or both. Typically, it starts with the perception of birth. Um, if mother's perception of birth is negative, she acts accordingly to protect herself by most commonly tensing her body. Like, have you seen a mama in a contraction just kind of tense? Um, holding her breath. Uh, those things are so common, but um, actually hurting you. <laughs> Uh, making it more painful. Breathing and body re relaxation techniques are crucial to calm the nervous system um, because we're talking to that vagus nerve, trying to calm that down, saying, you're fine, you're fine. And to bring fresh oxygen to the uterus so it can work properly. Um, so yeah, fear, e e either you're entering the pain cycle through fear um, with, um, you know, your frazzled, negative perception, um, your thinking in the past, thinking in the future, um, or you're entering the pain cycle through tension first, like where you're just feeling overwhelmed and unsafe, um, you're tensing up, and then that's, you know, triggering that adrenaline, where, yeah, you're feeling, uh, scared or loss of control, lack of blood flow to the uterus, um, producing unproductive contractions because of it um, and also yeah affecting your pain level so labor hormone boosters relaxing birth space um, I described the, I, these best into two categories intimate environment helps you give a picture of what the setting needs to be like warm and quiet dark to boost that melatonin. Um, you could do dim or natural sunlight. Contains home-like environments, um, cozy, inviting. The energy of the room should be just filled with laughter and love and confidence. Um, so kick those unwelcome guests out if they're not, you know, being positive for you. Um, this inter intimate environment allows the mother to just be open and vulnerable and feel trusting and safe with a deep sense of relaxation to let go. Um, I already went over melatonin and things like that. So romantic sensations. 
So uh, that's how you should kind of envision sensations. <laughs> um, so light massage, kissing, touch, warm baths, aromatherapy, soft music that is comforting, calming, and relaxing. So um, is anyone, you know, picking up on what I'm talking about? <laughs> These romantic-like comfort measures are relaxing sensations that boost strong endorphins and they create almost this amnesiac state or amnesiac state, however you say it, <laughs> where mom becomes unaware of the outside world or the passage of time. Um, so yeah, you just, you get they call it the birth world where you're just kind of unaware of what what time it is and um, things like that. So boosts of oxytocin are released from things like a kiss and touch to progress labor with productive contractions. Um, yeah, and, and in between there's this intense feeling of love and deep connection. Uh-oh, I don't know where my Wonder Woman went, but um, two minutes of power posing like Wonder Woman, oh, there she is, <laughs> causes a 25% decrease in cortisol levels, which is one of those stress hormones that, um, so I use, I have ways that you can incorporate power posing in birth and in labor to get that cortisol level down, um, come out of a fear cycle or pain cycle, um, which is super cool. Okay, so like I said, you can do this relaxing birth space at home if you choose to birth at home, if you choose to birth at a birth center, um, or if you even choose to birth at a hospital. Um, so yeah, you can get your birth environment, your birth space going, and um, yeah, boost those labor hormones. Okay, number three, fearless prep. Having the curiosity to rid fears with the options <laughs> and alternatives. Trusting the process of birth. Knowing the truth of how we are capable to transform. Having the courage to instinctly, in, uh, instinct, instinctually, I think is what I put, move, but you're using your mama instincts, and listen to your, your body, using that intuition, and making informed decisions, um, so yeah, this gives you the ability to stay calm with a fearless mindset, um, which allows the body to produce positive labor hormones, Okay, <laughs> sorry my daughter woke up from her nap, so now my husband is watching her so I can continue. Okay, so where were we? This gives you the ability to stay calm and with a fearless mindset, which allows the body to produce uh, positive labor hormones to ultimately have a quick and easier, easier labor, and that is what we all want, right? <laughs> um, so I, this over here is like a little, it's called relaxation um, rhythm ritual, where essentially a mom just kind of gets in this rhythm of her personalized coping style. So here you can see me relaxing out of a wave or a contraction and then breathing in a rhythmic way throughout the contraction. So that's how I am relaxing. And then um, breathing, let's see, breathing out of the wave. Oh, and then breathing in a wave. So there's that. And I have so many more examples of what um, relaxation, rhythm, and ritual looks like. Um, and some that you could kind of follow for you to cope with in my program. So also positive labor hormones definitely are promoted when you're curious, like we mentioned, um, knowing the truth, having courage and a calmness about you, um, the ability to move around and listen. And that, like I said, produces those productive contractions and fast and easy birth. Okay, um, so this is where you break the fear of the unknown with education as well. Knowing what to expect and what to do with each stage of labor helps you to know what is normal. Um, so you aren't going, you know, to be taken by surprise and you 
you'll have the tools to support you. Um, so, you know, the ability to stay calm and fearless is super, super important and making sure we're wiping out the fears of the unknown, um, through knowledge and education and, um, the physical tools you can use to help. So this is where you reprogram your negative birth perceptions with true facts. Um, and info and come up with a birth plan so you are prepared and ready. Um, acronyms are super helpful when preparing and help you stay on your birth plan. But I wanted to share with you um, these. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, had to remove the vibrating watch. <laughs> okay, to lower unnecessary interventions with these three sentences. Is that really necessary? Are there any alternatives? I hear, I understand, I decline. These are powerful words that you can use and take in your labor um, and your birth. But um, I, like I said, I have several other acronyms and things for you to take like this one page birth plan. Um, and that's another big tip is that you don't want to bring a like a three page paper on you know your birth plan you just want it to be visual make sure that your nurses or your midwife is on the same page as you and these little birth icons are you know super super helpful with that and you can create your own but I do have one um, for you to download and create um, in my birth academy program so this is where you also learn all the labor coping tools and the labor massages that your birth partner can do um, these fast fiber neurons distract your brain from slow fiber labor sensations so for example water therapy a labor comb if i don't know if you know about the labor comb but we go into detail on that a tens unit grounding touch brush touch um, there's you know there's certain massages that really can um, just help give you energy and also boost those labor inducing hormones but they're also playing with the gate control of pain theory so pressure points and more and all the other ones there's several all work to crowd the brain with senses to cope with labor so um, super super cool it, it blocks essentially the pain signals um, works with that um, your uh, natural pain killing endorphins to you know cope with labor so um, deep, this is a little bit of my story, deep into my own labor, I had a moment of fear. I started to feel menstrual-like cramping, and it reminded me of the pain I had as a teen dealing with dysmenorrhea, um, which is, it's kind of like this just painful, um, menstrual cycles, really, essentially, where I would, like, literally pass out. Um, anyways, which is a... It, that is essentially what is a physical pain signaling that something is wrong with my health. Like I had hormones out of balance. Um, so, but labor contractions. So that pain was signaling something was wrong to help me to fix it. And we did. We got that taken care of. That doesn't happen to me anymore. But labor contractions are something called a transformational pain. Um, signaling that things are going good just as they should be and bringing you closer to your baby and because I was having that sensation I knew I was nearing active labor and I traded that false fear thought um, that something was not right with the this menstrual like type cramping um, and then I I traded it with what was true um, those were good the, good contractions you know bringing me closer to my baby I knew exactly what to expect and I knew it was all normal and brought me back that thought brought me back to peace um, so the nurses um, actually even called me a birth war warrior <laughs> with how I was coping with such strong uh, contractions that they could see on the monitor and so that was super encouraging to me that I was like um, just being staying so calm and coping with labor really well um anyways that would be nice to be called a birth warrior wouldn't it um okay 
so let's go over some fearless prep testimonies. I just have to reach out and thank you for sharing your genuine heart experiences and knowledge in your videos as we anxiously await the arrival of our rainbow baby boy we your videos have been so hugely helpful and calming in a market that can be very fear inducing you are real soothing and such fun to watch exactly what a mama needs at this time thank you for showing up for all of us i'm certain i'm far from the only one who is so grateful so sweet. Okay, this is great info. This is my second pregnancy and I've been doing a lot more research about labor this time around. Your video gives an excellent summary of all the things that I have researched about promoting an effective and calm labor. Um, the shortest video I've seen in my education for preparation of labor and I learned so so much um, dilation isn't everything yes. if that uterine pressure isn't built for an automatic ejection <laughs> so we talked about that when you're building the fundus um, also I wanted to point out she was preparing for her second pregnancy I've dealt with even six-time pregnant mamas um, so they've had they're on their six children and they say they've learned something um, or learned a lot of new things from me. So it's been so cool to mentor these mamas, these experienced mamas. So if you're thinking, you know, oh, I know what's going on. Don't think that. Like, there's so much information you may not know. So we had our sweet little girl last Wednesday evening, and I just wanted to say a huge thank you for your video tips, videos, tips, etc. We had all an all natural birth and delivered in about three and a half hours. The doctors and nurses were so impressed and thought I must have taken a bunch of classes for how well it went. I told them it was your videos and Jesus. Thank you. I love that one. Okay. Yeah. So she would, the, her nurses, you know, saw that she was, you know, coping in such a different way. Um, lively and, um, calmly and, um, that I love that part because, um, yeah, it, it makes you wonder like, okay, well, how are you doing this? And then, yeah, the whole wave, the ripple effect of your experience can just be taken. Um, okay, this, the, the last key, mindful prep, I gave it its own key because this is so, so important. So, so important. So this is where you are shutting off your survival brain that we talked about with the fight or flight mode. This is part of your brain that wants you to fight or flight. We don't um, need that system in birth. In fact, the system can cause pain. But when we practice mindfulness, we stay in the present um, to prevent fear thoughts and to keep our brain, body, and um, breathing calm and peaceful. So I just wanted to point out, I like to call it mindful prep. Um, other people can call it, uh, they call it hypnobirthing or something like that, but um, it's not hypnosis or anything. Um, um, but it, actually, it's bringing awareness so you're not unaware of what you're doing. You are actually bringing more awareness to your body and to things around you where um yeah, it can distract you from fear, fear thoughts and from pain. Okay, so I wanted to go into detail on some of them because they're so important. So stay with me. The top five techniques to stay in the present. Visualization. Um, this is not manifestation, by the way. Um, it is a technique that Olympic athletes use to bring evidence to the brain that they can do it. So they're literally giving their brain evidence that um, they've done it in the past. Um, it's kind of like a brain trick. You're tricking your brain saying, look, I can do it because I'm in visualizing it. And um, they take that into their, you know, their routine, their gymnastics routine or whatever they're doing. Um, they also do that to get rid of um, bad perceptions, like maybe they broke an ankle. Um, and so they're needing to reprogram their brain to give them the confidence to perform well again. So super cool to incorporate it in your birth. So maybe you've had birth trauma in the past. Maybe you've had a 
bad birth experience and you're really needing to, you know, get that healing birth and, and have a great birth experience, but that past bad experience is really holding you back. Um, okay, so muscle contraction and relaxation exercise. Um, this is super cool, something I learned from a book. It, in comparison to your uterine contraction, you can practice releasing muscles and staying in control mentally. So like, so if you like flex your muscle and then you release it and then you can flex it and then you can even hold it for periods of times and say certain things and do certain things to help you um, cope with that and realize that your uterine contraction is just a muscle contraction. It's not anything, um, you know, where it's going to hurt you. It's just a muscle contraction. Okay, so focusing on what's going for you, that's positive. This is super important. Um, affirmations that resonate with you. You know, there could be some that are just way out there or you don't know what they're even meaning. Um, so finding the ones that are super, you know, resonating with you, super important. And I have some great ones right there in that picture. Um, I personally created them and think they are very affirming and help you. Um, but anyway, so let's see, Press, focus on the positive. Um, oh yeah, you want them, the, you, you want them to, you know, um, help you trust the process of birth and then also focus on the positive watch um, watch what you're saying um, are you speaking negatively are you um, portraying a negative future on yourself like I remember someone was like oh I'll probably just you know ha have to have an emergency section like my mom or you know and I'm just like why would you <laughs> You know, let's talk positive about your birth and making and make sure that you are, you know, it's about the mindset. It's not about, you know, speaking. It's more of like you're just your mindset, your belief in yourself, trust in yourself. Um, so also be careful who you're choosing to share your birth um, plan with and what you are, um, what you share with others to protect your faith in yourself and your trust in yourself. So, um, think of those who have gone before us. This was a big one for me. I remember my friend <laughs> because she did it. I so felt like I could do it too. Um, so trust in those that have gone before you, um, and who have experienced a true positive fearless birth. Um, this is what I call hardcore evidence. So the vis visualization is also evidence, but this is definitely hardcore evidence that you can do it. And because someone else has overcome too. Um, anyways, just knowing that mother's before me and that you're even birthing with t millions of mamas, you know, um, you know, we're all in this together and there are people who have come out of birth empowered and feeling, um, ecstatic. So, um, yeah, reading birth stories are super, super important. Um, they, they can give you hope and then just help you just know, um, you know, kind of how they prepared, what's normal, what's not normal. And, um, so anyways, gave me so much hope. That's the only future you know of for sure. Many um, have already overcome. Yes, that's the only future that, that you know of for sure. It's something I talk about in my concept. So mindful breathing techniques to distract your brain from fear, such as body scanning and observing the five senses and items in the room and more. So Let's go over that one. That one's my favorite one. Mindful techniques bring awareness to something. It can be one of the five senses. It can be awareness of an item um, or it can be awareness of your own body. Um, so things that are like is how is someone touching your body? What is th what are things feeling like to your body? Um, but also um, yeah, you can do it uh, to other items in the room. So I call this scanning. So let's scan this disco ball planter and observe the, okay, so 
we can look at it and let's observe the lighter shades of green, um, the darker shades of green kind of in the back with the shadows. Notice how the leaf is almost transparent, shining in the window. Notice the stems and how they connect to a larger stem. Discover the glass tiles and what those are each reflecting. You, you can see little pictures in there and different shades of light, darker reflections, lighter reflections. Notice how some sparkle light and some are darker. There is a chain. Follow that chain all the way up and how it connects to the planter and to the wall and holds it floating. So, um, I don't know if you found that relaxing or not, but essentially you're just zooming in. You're you're being mindful. You're bringing awareness to something, and um, it works so good. I I did that. Um, so, I'll, okay, I'm sharing it with you right here. <laughs> so what I did for my second birth um, was create a little birth space. Since I was in the car for my entire labor, I knew I had to get creative here. <laughs> um, so... My car was the birth space, and so, yeah, I had to, you know, cope very well to stay calm. Um, but I had my tools. I knew what I was doing. I prepared for this. I, I turned on pretty piano ocean music. You can use anything. I, I just find that super soothing. Um, so, and then I closed my eyes from, to distract myself from disturbing traffic. Um, and I instantly began de-stressor breathing. Um, it's a certain type of breathing to just calm your nervous system. And then I did the mindfulness techniques I had practiced with the ice prep. Um, so I also scanned my body to release tension where I was holding it. Let's say I was holding tension in my jaw, which is super important because your jaw is connected with your pelvic floor. Um, which is holding your baby. So, um, anyways, I even observed the smells in the car, and I, I was actually holding peppermint um, essential oil and smelling it with my nose um, so that I was focusing on that smell and that scent. I was using it for other purposes as well, but um, anyways, I listened to what my daughter was doing in the back seat so I could hear her, um, you know, on a little iPad. I was trying to really listen to that music and what she was saying and kind of, kind of her comments. Um, so just bringing awareness to the whole car and not focusing, not focusing on my contractions. I was able to stay calm and stay in control and cope with labor perfectly using my just my mind and breathing. I, I wasn't getting labor massages. I wasn't using a TENS unit. I wasn't getting an epidural. I simply used my mind and my breath. Okay, so um, let's see. Yes, I woke up at 5.50. Okay, so here's some mindful birth testimonies. I woke up at 5.50 this morning and had sharp contractions, but not close together. I decided we needed to just go ahead and go up to the hospital. They weren't too bad, but sharp, but I just did your breathing through them. Um, she's talking about the mindful breathing. Um, I was nervous they would honestly send us home because they were kind of intense, but not like super crazy or close together. I seriously almost gave birth in the elevator. Um, I could feel my body pushing and knew I had like maybe five minutes to get into the room. No joke. We got in the room and barely got on the bed and I had that baby out. None of the nurses could believe how calm I was and how fast I pushed them out. It was so amazing and I would have never been that calm or that prepared if I wouldn't have watched your videos. Everyone is talking about it still tonight. Um, plus, he was 8 pounds, 8 ounces, no tearing. It was definitely you and God that got me through it. I love that one. I love that one so much. Um, are you seeing a pattern here like fast births, calm births, That's so amazing. Chemistry and physics and all the basics of how things work so I can imagine my body in this case at work. Um, your research helped so 
helped so, uh, I guess she was going to say much. <laughs> Thank you. I delivered my third child last Friday at home in the pool with my midwife, just checking baby's heartbeat twice. Yep, feeling baby's head and catching her while having my mind focused and aware of every second was the most gratifying experience. So I want to touch on that a bit because um it is a gratifying experience because when we're in the present, when we're mindful and in the present, that's where we can remember memories the best. And you want to remember this birth experience forever um, in a positive way and every detail. I mean, you can remember bits and pieces, but I'm talking every detail um, is such a precious gift. Okay, so how would it feel to be fully prepared for birth knowing the tools for a faster, easier, ecstatic birth? Ecstatic birth. Um, there's me giving birth, and the, the literal words that I uh, said after I caught my baby was, that was so fast. Like, it was just so fast. Um, like I said, um, I'll read this one. There's a pattern here. <laughs> it's not just me with the fast birth stories. We delivered our little boy, as you saw. I did your video every day leading up to his birth, and for the whole night I was laboring, we got the uh, to the hospital. We barely made it, barely made it into our room, and we were able to have such an easy, quick, natural birth. Um, I don't think it would have been so quick and seamless. And I believe I already read that other one. Um, she kind of went into more detail uh, on that where, um, yes, it happened so fast, but honestly was the best experience of my life. I didn't feel any type of labor pain till we got up to the room. So like minutes before she pushed <laughs> um, he, and he was on his way out. So amazing. Okay, your birth will make an impact on you and it will make an impact on others. Um, I got that message in a dream when I was pregnant with Collins Clementine right there who I'm holding. And um, yeah, your birth will make an impact on you and it will make an impact on others and yours will too. You will remember this day for the rest of your life. Birth is a very final thing. There is no restart button. And... I want it to be one of the best moments of your life. So wrap it all up. The four keys birth formula. Pelvic prep. You got to have that. Hormone prep. Fearless birth prep. Mindful prep. Um, the research done for you. All in a program. Okay. So you have three options. Blindly going to pregnancy and birth, flying by the seat of your pants, and getting through by the hairs on your chinny chin chin. <laughs> can you can easily turn? Um, it can easily turn you into Monzilla out of fear and loss of control. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that is an option. You could not prepare. Uh, so, option number two: DIY pregnancy, labor, and birth. Um, spend months. <laughs> researching and myth busting possibly putting yourself in the situation to get overwhelmed with tools and tactics that could fail you in the end or you could number three study another mama's research that's me <laughs> to welcome childbirth and control spiritually in tune and with a sense of peace enjoy a more comfortable and peaceful pregnancy um that carries you into having a dreamy, practically pain-free birth experience. Grow your trust in birth. Grow confidence in yourself. Hear your intuition more clearly. Discover a power in you that will impact others for generations.